1962, your sophomore year, Class A state meet. You win your first state championship uh, at that meet. I'm sure after a long career that included a you know college career, it's difficult to remember every single year. But yeah. the first state championship, I'm sure, had a special meaning to you and that kind of breakthrough as a sophomore. What do you remember about that year and that meet? Well, that was where I swam the 400, and I did 404, so I broke the state record by six seconds, seven seconds. And it was in page newspapers, and uh, it was <laughs> – the accolades were almost too much for me because I was just this – sophomore in high school and all of a sudden you're you're lauded as you know this superstar and and uh, I got so embarrassed that you know when the letter sweaters uh that come out you get a stripe for all school all east city all city all state all american so I made all american that year I wore it once you know that letter sweater for Pershing and I was embarrassed by all those striped colors. You know, it's just like it put me above everyone else and, and being a kind of a socialist, <laughs> you know, egalitarian person. Even back then, I just, I just, there's no way I could bring everyone up to me. So I just, I just never, I stopped wearing that letter sweater for that reason. Okay. But it was a big moment. Uh, in 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 my stature in Michigan, and but it made it also meant that I had to keep working. You know, then you have to uphold uh, your position, and then then you're susceptible to to you know the dip. So my junior year, I went down in time, I think, and that was uh, had something to do with my legs as I recall, uh, were growing too fast. And so I lost the ability to kick. And, that, and so it's like my ability, I couldn't go as fast that year. In the 400, but in the 200, you broke your second state record, right? Pardon? I think uh, in the 200, you, your junior year, you win your first state championship in the 200. And I think you did go yeah. faster went under 153 for the first time, and I think broke yeah. uh, the state record. So you did go a little bit faster in the 200, and uh, that was the first time you doubled, you know, and that's your, your maybe your, the one of the highlights of your career and that you won both championships there in 63. Yeah, but I guess I didn't feel as, I was as good as I was in my sophomore year. That was just a personal thing. Uh, because my 400 time wasn't as good as the previous year. But, but what happened, I started to get better at the shorter races. You know, the 200 was probably my event rather than the 400 or the 100. So, so let me take you right there to that. So in 1964, you're involved in two really historic races, you know, for that time. And, for different reasons and let's start with the 200 you go 150.21 just missing becoming the first boy ever under 150 but there had never been a boy in Michigan under 152 or 151 this is a huge swim two and a half seconds faster than any boy in Michigan has ever been to that point um big moment for you you remember that well again it, I do and, and and I don't it wasn't Swimming was not, it, I don't, I, it's hard to talk about or articulate it, Mark, but it never was, it, it, I never let the, 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 we could say the, the, the brilliance of the two second drop uh, impact on me in such a way that it was seared into my brain that, wow, you're this fantastic swimmer. It just happened. I, it, and I did my best. I got the time. And, you know, you move on to the next thing. 
So it's it's like a, if you were to ask me like you did, I didn't. Even, I don't even recall that I broke. I missed that one forty nine. You know. Yeah. It just was. It's uh, so swimming was important for me, but in ways other than setting records. That's where I come from. Well, you talked about, you know, just swimming best times and improving and all those things. And you certainly did that. So I'm sure you were very happy that day uh, with that oh, yes. swim. Oh, at the, t at the moment, yeah. Absolutely. You been, wow, you did it. Absolutely. And, and then, then the next day you're in the pool working yeah. out again. Right. See? Well, you said you're not relying on your past. You said you were on to the next thing. And the next thing was um, without question the best 400 freestyle race in the history of the state of Michigan. Two swimmers shattered the state record by over three seconds. Now the meet record is 404 that you mentioned from your sophomore year. And I know that each of you had already been uh, in the four minute range before the state meet. So everybody knows that this is a huge race that's coming. Doug goes 359 in prelims to become the first boy under four minutes. Um, but everybody knows uh, that this is going to be a great race the following day. Um, I've gathered from Doug's story that, you know, from, from his memory that you took the lead early and really charged out, uh, and he made a late comeback. Each of you went three, he, you went 357-1, one of the 10 fastest times in America that year. Doug touched you out by less than a half second um, to take the state record. But you had a wonderful swim, three seconds faster than you had ever been in your career and really put a great cap on an amazing high school career that you had. Even if you didn't win that race, you had never been better than you were in that race. You remember that one? Oh, definitely. <laughs> so I went out. I never thought I charged out intentionally. It just was my style. You feel good. You've hyperventilated. I just went out relatively smooth you know first hundred two hundred and i was feeling really good and and i knew doug would come back that's just you just kind of know patterns and styles he was also a good friend see so uh i just said okay i'll let up a little on the third hundred and just uh and then come home in the last hundred uh and that's how kind of how i swam that and as I mentioned in our phone talk, the only disappointment I had is I missed my last flip. You know, I, I you know, you expect a good push off. I had a third of a push off. So I'm almost dead in the water for the last 25 yards, you know, and then to come back from that uh, is hard. But I still got the 357. So, it, it, and it was, it was exciting too. You know, the 3,000 spectators and all that. Uh, so, yeah, and that was the culmination of my high school time. And, uh, and having, you know, won the 200, doing my best in the 400. Again, I don't think I lost to Doug. I think, or that Doug beat me. I, I just swam my swim, you know, and did what I did. and. My dad was upset. A lot of people from Seaholm were upset that Kimball, you know, but that's that parochialism, which I, I've always tried to, to, tried to avoid. Like even in politics, I have as many Trump supporter friends <laughs> as, you know, Democratic. And that was my dad's outlook on life, too. He was Serbian, so the, the Serbian Croatian anxiety. He had Catholic friends as well as Serbian friends. We were brought up with that. So you see how it in, influences my behavior in the swimming pool. You just, you, you don't set the person up as the opposition that you have to defeat. If anything, you, you take them on as an ally to help you swim. So in a sense, Douglas helped me achieve that 357. And that's where sports are, are good. So there's no doubt. I mean, I think he he speaks of you 
incredibly highly and values your friendship and the relationship that you guys have had over the last 60 years. There's no question. And I think he would absolutely agree that you guys worked together that day yeah. to do something that was really, really special for all, all those 3,000 fans that were in the pool that day. They saw one of the greatest races yeah. in the history of the state of Michigan. Yeah, yeah, it was. It's too. It's too bad that's that there still. Uh, you know, you'd like to see what Doug and I would have done with the new swimsuits, with the new coaching techniques. You know, all of that. And <laughs> how do you, how you throw the equipment? Uh, yeah. This is, yeah. I, I think this is the perfect kind of transition here. Um, before we kind of move on to the, the after high school, I, I, you know, you mentioned missing that last turn and we haven't really talked about swimming in the 60s and, and what it looked like and what it was. But, you know, I think that anybody who's been following my series has heard some of the swimmers from the 60s and early 70s talk about swimming without goggles and that's just a part of that race that we haven't discussed and you know the fact that you guys went 356 and 357 in the 400 might not sound like that big of a deal to some guys that are listening to this this story that are used to wearing uh top of the line uh technological suits and you know they did uh, you know wear these goggles and all these things you guys didn't have goggles on. You went 357 with no goggles on. And, you know, the reason that a swimmer might miss a turn is because his eyes are bleeding from the chlorine yep. and he's, yep. he's exhausted and his lungs, are, his lungs are tearing. And the last thing he wants to think about is just seeing what's coming up. You know, let me ask you, you know, just a, a really broad question. Can you describe for me what swimming looked like what swimming was at that time when it comes to the lane lines and the goggles and the swimsuits and the things that you did at that time to be a swimmer? You persevered. Think of the, the swimming lanes. The, the pools weren't flat, you know, where the water runs off smoothly. You would get chopped going like this. So you had to struggle with through that. And that was just, it's like learning to swim in the North Sea. And so in a way it helps, <laughs> I would imagine, if you had a chance to swim in a smooth pool, but the goggles were the big one. You know, having to swim and then always put your head up like that, see? So by just doing that, your chest drops and that it's like a barricade. Whereas if you knew the goggles, you could see it differently. It, it, there were markings for sure, but some pools were better than others. But it was always a hassle. And yes, eyeballs were always red. I always had red eyes and smelled of chlorine. Uh, but it, well, you know what, 100 years from now, the, those swimmers look to today's swimmers and say, well, they had it really tough. So, you know, if, if I were, in the 60s, if we look to the 40s, the swimming costumes and all. So, but you look at that photo you sent me of us on the podium, those swimsuits were not uh, hydrodynamic or, you know what I mean? They were baggy Speedos. They weren't the tight little Speedos. And you might shave your legs. Some guys got brave and shaved their arms, you know, but basically it was just hit, hitting it. 